Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about our Diablo 4 Druid build. This is definitely one of the strongest builds out there right now for Diablo 4, and if you're looking to try the Druid in the beta, I highly suggest trying this build. So right now we're actually only at level 20 on this character, however we already have found one of the most strong builds that we've seen in Diablo 4, and I want to kind of walk you through this really quickly and like I said we are going to be level 25 by the end of the day but I wanted to get you guys this build as quickly as possible because of how fun it's already been from like these level what probably 17 to 20 17 to 21 um, so let's take a look at the first skill here it's called the storm strike this isn't the biggest part of the build because this build is going to resolve or kind of revolve around the companion skills this is just going to be one we are going to mandatorily have to kind of grab it's going to basically give us a little bit of damage reduction for three seconds as well as damage enemies in uh, area around you so three surrounding enemies dealing 20% less damage each time it it, uh, it chains. So it's not going to do a ton of damage to each enemy, but it is going to have a small amount, basically, of AoE. But the biggest part is we have two modifiers, right? So the Enhanced Storm Strike is going to give us that 15% chance to immobilize all enemies hit for 2.5 seconds. And next, we have the Fierce Storm Strike. This is going to apply a 50% chance to make enemies vulnerable for 3 seconds. And I'll explain why these two are very, very important for this build here in just a minute. As we go farther down, this is going to be the core skills. We're going to max out our Landslide. Landslide is so, so strong for the Druid right now. And with maxing this out, we're going to have a couple different things that are going to help us with this. We're going to basically get a ton of extra damage, but the two enhancements that we're going to take are the really the enhanced Landslide. So after a Landslide damages enemies four times, the next hit will immobilize enemies for three seconds. You'll notice one thing here that we keep doing. It's immobilizing enemies, and we'll talk literally about that in just a second on how important that is for the Druid build we're running. Next up, we have the Primal Landslide. So when you immobilize or stun an enemy, you gain a Terra Moat. Each enemy hit by a Landslide consumes a Terra Moat, causing a guaranteed critical strike with 40% critical strike damage. Bosses always have up to a 10% chance to grant a Terra Moat when hit. So this helps us with boss fights. Some of the companion skills are a little higher cooldown rates, so it's nice to have the Landslide doing a lot of extra damage while we're you know, continuing to push these dungeons and uh, strongholds throughout Diablo 4. The next thing we're going to just take um, actually one of the entire defense skills category because right now we're not struggling to stay alive at all. But the one thing I will take is this right here. It's the Earthen Bulwark. And again, it gives us a barrier that absorbs 45% of your base life. This is important for one specific reason, and I'll show you guys that here in just a minute as well. So just hang in there. We are going to get to some of the different weapons that make these things very, very strong. So let's take a look at those right now. The first thing before we go into our companion skills I want you to note is this is very, very mandatory for this build. Gain one additional companion. In addition, your companion skills deal 300% damage. So you can see here, I'm actually running with three wolves, right? And this is so, so big. And we'll go over, like I said, the companion skills in just a second. But it's going to provide us more damage passively. And then also with our abilities, when we use our abilities, they're going to do a lot more damage because that 300% bonus damage is going to actually provide us a ton of burst and passive damage all around. The next thing I want to kind of explain the barriers, uh, the barrier reason why we're going that earthen bulwark that you'll see here, the earthen bulwark. We are going this specifically because it's going to really help us get that barrier active more often and with that barrier active you deal 30 percent increased damage that's going to be a very very solid kind of uh synergy that you're going to have with these two different legendaries we do have three other legendaries but these aren't going to have a big big part in what we're doing um this is one thing i do want to kind of show you guys though you have 20 percent increased crowd control duration very, very strong because we're doing a lot of different crowd control with this build. And then it deals 35% increased damage to unstoppable enemies. So that's pretty nice to have, but definitely not mandatory. The main two that I would say you are looking for is definitely this. You need this to even run a companion build successfully, I feel like. And then you also, this would be a really nice legendary aspect to have as well. The increased barrier damage um, or increased damage when you have barrier active. So let's go back to the abilities now and kind of walk you quickly through the companion skills. So when you're trying this build out, you'll definitely want to have Wolves, Vine Creeper, and the Ravens. These are all three different companion 
really skills that are going to provide you a lot of damage. The thing I like to do with the wolves here, you can see I have an enhanced wolf pack. So the wolves deal 20% increased damage to immobilized, stunned, slowed, or poisoned enemies. Like you heard many times throughout this skill tree, I'm taking abilities and skills and enhancements that are giving me that immobilize, stun, and slow. So this is going to help me quite a bit with wolf damage. We also can go with the critically strike your wolves gain 20% attack speed for 3 seconds, or you could always go for the Ferocious Wolf Pack as well. It's up to your gameplay style there. It's not too important. The big thing, though, I do want to say is, though, with the Ravens, make sure you're taking this Enhanced Ravens. You have 5% increased critical strike chance for 6 seconds against enemies hit by Ravens. You're going to hit enemies with the Ravens quite a bit. It's going to help you continually do a lot more damage when you have a higher crit hit chance. So make sure to do that. And then also two additional Ravens periodically attack enemies. I do like the passive damage the Brutal Ravens provides. Uh, on the left side, you can also see more on the Vine Creeper. You can also take the Enhanced Vine Creeper. So Vine Creeper's immobilized duration is increased if you want. You can also go with the Active Poisoning duration is increased. Or you can even go for the critical strike chance being increased. All of these are good options for the Vine Creeper. We're not quite there to where we have additional points to put in, but uh, you know you have a lot of different build priorities here. And the big one here in the companion skills is going to be the passive Call of the Wild. Call of the Wild is a 30% bonus for your companion's damage. So now we're doing a 30% on top of a 300% on top of the barrier percent that we're talking about with our legendary gloves or uh, I think it was arms. So let's actually take a look and make sure I'm talking about the right thing here. It is the legendary gloves that are giving us that barrier increase in damage. So this is all coming together very, very nicely. And I've noticed, you know, this build is definitely one of the strongest I've played. I've played a lot of different builds at this point, and this is the one that's making the most sense. You can also see that we are able to take any of the wrath skills we want. We've just skipped out completely on that because we're continuing to buff our companion skills and we have a great amount of damage coming from our landslide as well. There's no need for really any wrath skills. There's no need for any defensive skills other than just having that barrier active for more damage. And this is why this build makes the most sense. And like I said, it's the strongest druid build, in my opinion, without a doubt. So if you guys want to take a look at this one, definitely do so. And if you like this video, if it helped you guys at all or was hopefully a little entertaining. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. I'll see you guys all in the next one.